now we're gonna go beyond the game trailer of Celestial Old uh, Celestial Tales Old North, and you know, the, the, here's the thing. The, the cool thing is right now here in Miami, it's 10 p.m., but in Indonesia, it is, what time is it out there? It's um, 9 a.m. 9, 9 a.m., wow. See, that that's why I like doing this, being able to talk to people across the world. I couldn't imagine what kind of flight that would be <laughs> because just traveling all that long distance. Uh, but here's something that, that you have to help me with because I, I was I was looking at this all day and actually even originally when, when we were talking and my last name is Larock and a lot of times people are able to pronounce it fine. Sometimes they mess it up. Me, I hate when I mess up someone else's name. So I'm going to try this, right? Because I don't want to mess up someone else's name. But then you tell me if I screw it up or now. Is it, is it uh, Saipato? Is that the for, is that right pronunciation or is that wrong? Um, you spell the C in a in a more um, how is it? Uh, we call my name here Chipto. C we say it as C. Chipto. Oh, Chip Chipto. Like that. Yeah. That's that's oh. how you say it. Yeah. Oh, okay. So then, okay, then. Uh, so then, is it Arigundo? Oh no. Um yeah, you can you can do it like that. Okay. Well no, I, I wanna that's learn. Awesome. I don't wanna cause see, that's like me. Like some people say Lara Q and then you know, and then I'll I don't wanna be I don't wanna say someone's incorrect. I want I really do wanna learn someone's names correctly. So what would be the pr the correct name, the way to pronounce your name? Because I wanna get it right. Um they say it over here, Chikto Adiguno. 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 Okay, awesome. Yeah, See? So the I is like double E. Adiguno. Okay, awesome. And you're yeah, the producer right. for the uh, on this game, correct? Correct. Okay, cool. All right. See, you know, and, and that's the thing. This is, you know, a learning experience for, for me as well as anyone that watches this because, you know, that's what we want to do is be able to learn not only about the game but also about you know, just gaming in general, because, you know, I've never been to Indonesia, is, you know, before we just get into the game itself, can you tell me just, you know, from your perspective, you know, have you noticed just, you know, interacting, you know, talking with people as far as other gaming cultures, what is the gaming scene like in Indonesia? Um... It's a bit hard to say, really. Um, we used to be back back in the '90s. Games are really, really expensive, at least the, the the original ones. So Indonesia is known as a place where people pirate their games. Um, up until now, some people still have that same mentality. They pirate a lot of games instead of buying the real ones. But thanks to ease of buying. Uh, from Steam, from GOG, and other sites, people have started to buy original games like them. So it's getting better. Now, as far as like arcades and or console games or PC games, which would you say is more used in Indonesia, or is it kind of balanced? Um, I think Indonesians like free-to-play games. Um, that means mostly MMORPGs or um, online shooters. Uh, they like those kind of games. Or Dota or League of Legends. They like free-to-play games. Uh, although they actually buy a lot of in-game cosmetics, they actually spend a lot on those games, but they don't like to pay for play. They like to pay for looks. So that's the most, that's the kind of games that are most popular in Indonesia. Oh, so picking up a game that, you know, is free, but if you can dress up your character in yeah. colors or armor pieces or something that decorates the character, they won't mind spending money on those features. Yep. They like oh. to look cooler than their friends. Oh, that, that's they interesting. Like go off. Yep. I mean, because see, in America, you kind of have a mixture. You have some people that complain because here you had games come out where you had MMOs where you're paying a subscription and, and then when it switched over you had some people that were happy but then you had people complaining uh, between the mixture of 
buying the a la carte items and then you had people who talked about when you had some games where they considered either buying to win or you know being nickel and dime to uh, death but that's really interesting but let's turn to uh, Celestian Tales Old North um, I really like the you know the the Japanese RPG style type games, uh, the turn-based style. Uh, I really like that. And one of the things that really struck me when I first came across this game was, you know, the art style. And as we saw in the in the trailer, you know, you have that really cool, the painted style that is, is talked about. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about the art that, that went into the game? Um, we took a lot of inspirations from the old RPGs from the 90s kind of SNES games. Uh, particularly for the animations, you can see that we use pixel arts. Uh, we actually want to make something that reminds you of the of the games of the 90s, like Suikoden, Chrono Trigger. And for the art style, for the backgrounds and the paintings, we took inspiration from Legend of Mana. Have you ever heard of it? Oh yes, yeah. That that was pretty popular um, uh, back in the that days for a lot of classic gamers. Yeah, that game was beautiful, and we want to we want to make something that that's not just nostalgic, but it's it's something new with current graphics. Um, that that's a mixture between old and new. So we still use two D, but not in the sense of the old games. Um, we we put paintings on it because uh, we tried using pixel arts like, we, like the old games used to, but it looks like some a game that's not supposed to be uh, released in 2015, like 20 years before. So uh, we ended up with paintings and we thought it, it went well. Yeah, that's one of the things that I that I like because I remember when they had Final Fantasy like seven, and then you looked at how sometimes when they had the the painted on backgrounds, it looked okay, but then you went back and played in in some areas, it kind of looked a little bit too pixelated. Where uh, in this game, the painted on backgrounds, it looked nice. So it's like sure. If you are just so into 3D and that's all you care about, okay, I guess maybe that'll be your thing. But you know, in this style, it looks really beautiful. Even though you know some people may call it a more retro style, but you know the painted style of it is really nice. What's also really nice is the music. Um, you know, I was looking at some of the reviews to see what people felt about the game, and I got to play a little bit of it myself. I only got to about a little bit. Uh, through chapter two, and I'm not going to spoil anything for anybody. Uh, but what was really cool is, and someone mentioned this in the review, is that the music was good not only in quality, but in quantity. And what they meant about that was it wasn't like just a few tracks. And, you know, people worry that, you know, without a big budget name or a big, you know, a lot of money that you would hear the same sounds or it would be just, you know, like uh, a few tones or a few music, but you had a lot of rich original music. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Um, we think that in games like ours, that where, where uh, the characters don't speak through voices, uh, we need a great music because it's the music that speaks to the players. The players don't hear anything other than the music. So using the same sounds is not something that we want to do. We want uh, music is uh, a vital part of our game because that's the only thing players would hear. It's the music that speaks to the player that's, that empowers the story. Um, that's why we focused on making on making the music ourselves. Uh, we were not actually using any kind of free music. We made it all ourselves. And some of them are using live vocals, like the opening and the ending. Um, that's actually one of the one of our Kickstarter's uh, stretch goals, the the one that uh, people funded. So we're happy to have made great music that people like. 
Right, just in case people didn't know, you know, you guys had a, a Kickstarter and it was funded through that, and people, yeah. you know, had expectations and things that they wanted, and, and that was one of the things that people talked about, that they wanted to have good music, and you guys definitely delivered. And what was cool is uh, when reading about, like, what the, the storyline, it talked about how, you know, this wasn't about time traveling, amnesia, it wasn't about, you know, fighting gods, it was about regular people. And it was cool, like, how you have the different storylines, you know, you have six characters, and you could play different ones, and you learn about these characters by playing uh, through each of these different type of characters. Uh, me, I personally like Camille. Uh, it just uh, she spoke to me, and I, I start out with her character. I haven't, of course, haven't got to play the other characters yet, and it's kind of cool because, of course, you group with all of them when you go and you go into Squire training but you don't get to learn everything unless you play the other characters. Now, obviously, we're not doing any spoilers or anything, but can you tell us a little bit about the story and the character interaction? Um, so a little bit of background here. The, the, the storyline was actually started when we, um, I and a group of my friends played uh, Dungeons & Dragons. Have you ever heard of it? Of course. Uh, so in D&D, in uh, we played uh, six of us. Six of us play, and we all made our own characters. The six characters, and of course, as we made our own characters, they all have their own backgrounds, their own characters, and because they were played by different persons, they become different, real different persons, real different characters. Um, it was from that game and from the interactions in the D and D that we managed to find out that making something, making a game, an experience, the same experience um, from different points of view is uh, something that we want to integrate in this game. So the characters are actually, the character interactions are actually drawn from real persons, real persons behind each character. That's how we, we were able to make uh, each character special. Very cool. Um, and of course, some characters are closer to, them, to another character than the others. But since they were all put in the same situation, they had to work together, even those who don't like each other. So I think um, the character interactions make uh, the game more lively. The characters seem like they are real people, they're breathing people, like we are. And the same with the story. It's like when you're going uh, through the story, you know, you actually have, you know, different choices that you have to make. Uh, it has to do a lot with their personality and, you know, you have like your moral choices that are important in the story as well, right? Right. Um, in the, when we played d and it wasn't one person's decision because we played it together. And if we want to make a decision, everyone has to agree with it. So we want to incorporate that because uh, the story can turn into a different side depending on your choices. Very cool. So the game actually came out on uh, on Monday, right? And you can get it on Steam and, and yep. also on GOG, correct? Right. So okay, Steam, then. GOG, and um, I think Green Man Gaming is selling it also, and the Humble Sword. Excellent. So I hope everybody liked the, the trailer. Uh, I got to play uh, the, the game itself. I'm going to play some more, and then I'll also put it up on uh, on the channel so that you guys can check out some of the gameplay. But you guys should actually go and, and purchase the game because it's really fun if you guys like RPGs with great art, great music, good story, good uh, characters. It's, it's really fun. Uh, but, you know, uh, thanks for coming on and talking to us about the game. Yeah, thanks, Laura. All right, so we'll be back soon with another episode. This is Beyond the Game Trailer, brought to you by Obsolete Gamer, where the gaming world comes to talk. We'll see you later.